There's a very good chance that today is new office day, an office down there has become available, considerably bigger than this one. Um, it's also like double the price, but... <laughs> Unfortunately, that was me no more dream nook. So I can't just put that there, talk to the camera. But I haven't really been making videos recently, it doesn't really matter anyway. Officey things. <laughs> where, do put, where do we put the whiteboard? How? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That's such a bad idea. No, I'm not including your face in a video, so it's okay. What are your thoughts on the office? Good. <laughs> this office is so much bigger than the other one. Like, what are we gonna do with all of this space? Internet's out. We moved to this office yesterday and the internet's out. And at first I was like, I think it's because we now share the router. Cause if you go over there, it uses a different router than we were before. I thought it was cause we now share a router with the guys on that side of the wall. Well, it's a good thing we're not an app development agency. Otherwise this would be very frustrating. I think that's the reason. So, but Matt's gone home because <laughs> nothing he can do really today with that internet and I'm not really sure what I'm going to do because even building in Flutter, you have to download, I, I believe you download Dart every single time and you can run it in offline mode, but it doesn't work particularly well. So I don't know what I'm going to be doing today, to be honest, because I can't go anywhere because I'm going to Norwich tonight. So I've got until six that I have to be in the office for with no internet. <sighs> Obviously the best course of action is to just record a video and waste some time. We still have a nook. We still just talk to the camera like this and use the natural light to make things look good. Here's a dragon. Here's the Fresh Play logo. Oh. So let's talk about how the business is doing and all of that stuff because I thought it was really boring talking about the business, but apparently that's what people enjoy hearing about. So I am so out of touch. So we have a lot of work on at the moment and it's a lot higher paying than before. What used to happen is we get an order through and it would be between $200 and $1,000 and that's fine. But you know, $1,000 a project, uh, a project is usually active on Fiverr. I think about an average of three weeks for us. Um, even if we quote for like, 14 days, it still takes a long time because inevitably people want revisions and that's entirely fair. So we need to account for that and doing kind of, do, and doing projects for a thousand dollars just wasn't really worth it. it. It seems like a lot of money. And, and you know, when I was back in um, my parents' living room working every day, it, it was a lot of money. You know, I was happy to be doing big projects. $200 to me was a big project because you, know, you get that sorted in a week uh, with a few other things, that's like a full-time salary but being in an office and being an actual limited company and having to pay insurance and office costs and obviously Matt works full time, you need to be, you need to be charging more. And so at the start of last week, uh, we finished a couple of big projects that were massively underquoted. And I decided right from now on, I'm only over quoting. And the, the direct result of that is less orders means we can spend the next couple of months dedicating a huge, we can do, just do those three projects. Rather than having like 11 projects on the go to make ends meet, we can just do those three and dedicate as much time as possible to making sure that they're perfect. And I think going forward, that's kind of the strategy that makes the most sense. It's certainly more fulfilling to not feel like I have to be rushing through a project. The current stage where we've got 11 projects on the go, we just need to get them done. And you can't put a huge amount of attention to detail when you're only getting paid 800 pounds for a few weeks work. And bear in mind as well, that that's not 800 pounds in the pocket. That's 800 pounds minus 20% for Fiverr's cut, minus 20% for VAT, obviously income tax, uh, but that's obviously calculated differently. And then you've got the office costs, you've got insurance costs, and just general business costs. There's that whole thing about how, in theory, all employment is exploitation. Because, for example, with Matt, if he brought less money into the company than he was earning, there would be no point hiring him. You know, the value of his labor is greater than what I'm actually paying him. And that is entirely true. But the flip side of that is we have a nice office, uh, we have insurance, we need to pay tax. And at least for a company of this size, um, salary wise, I earn less than him. I take a dividend, but I don't get paid that if we haven't made enough money in the month. So he ends up working for uh, just above minimum wage. And I actually work for about three or four pounds an hour in salary. Bear in mind, I actually, my take home is actually higher than that because of the dividends. But again, if we don't earn enough, I don't get paid that dividend. And you know, as a self-described socialist and uh, also the CEO of a tech company, it's kind of hard to try and find out where that line is. You know, at what point am I being unethical? At this stage, I'm kind of just thinking, well, here's what I can afford to pay Mac and while also paying myself, while also allowing the business to exist. And you know, we need to make a little bit of profit so that we can do things like advertising campaigns, get a nicer office, you know. The, already moving in here, you know, we've been in here for two days and even the internet's down today. I've been more productive this morning. Um, then you know, I would have been in a whole morning at the other office. It's just when you're in a better space, it's easier to be um, to be more productive and, and things like that definitely are a consideration. And I think at the moment, the line for me is how transparent am I being? 
I, to Matt, I say to him, right, here's what you're working on. He's the exact amount it's worth. You know, he, he knows and what the difference is between the amount he's getting paid and the amount that he is bringing into the company. With that transparency, he then has the decision, you know, do I continue working here or do I go somewhere else? I just think that's the way to be. And I think more companies should do that. Look at that, I just get rambling and I just talk for seven minutes. I'm like, oh, I'm not even gonna talk about this video. <laughs> I've got no idea. I don't reckon Zach or Adam or the people that I used to work with up in Lincoln watch these videos, but I completely forgot that at the bottom of this mug, because I bought this mug when I was in Lincoln, when because um, Freshway first started to publish BrawlQuest, it wasn't originally for app development. That's probably Rational's mascot. Um, I totally forgot it was there. It's the sort of thing we used to do. You suck, lol. We had this receipt printer, and you could just, you just got a website into the password and just send messages to each other. They just print out. And we had like a whole wall of quotes and stuff in the office. At one time, I thought it was a good idea to paste the whole B-movie script into there. Um, and, and Zach kind of instantly jumped onto it and, and I just unplugged it and then said, yeah, it's just gonna print it. It's just gonna print the entire script. What did you think was gonna happen? You know, fair enough. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest of my day because the internet isn't working and it's kind of hard to do app development when the internet isn't working. So I'm gonna edit this video and schedule it and hope for a return. I mean, the internet's working okay. Oh. Oh, that was working fine. Oh. I'm wearing a Christmas jumper. It's November 28th. Don't at me.